You're checking out the Investor Shed Podcast with Nick Beveridge and Jeremy Kitchen. They're on the path to financial freedom and they're taking their community with them. Stay tuned for the best free real estate investing advice on the internet. Welcome to the Investor Shed Podcast. My name is Nick Beveridge. <laughs> Nick spitting my coffee everywhere beverage. We're here with my co-host Jeremy Kitchen. How are you today? Oh, Nick, I'm doing so good. How are you doing today? <laughs> good. I just got a little bit of coffee on my shirt and chin, but um, I'm just going to go with it. All right. I love it. <laughs> today we have uh, Tyson Sidaway, newer real estate agent, um, just completed his very first fix and flip. He's going to tell us all about what it was like in the year of 2022 as the market crashed flipping his first house and how it ended. Yep. Pretty good for the uh, for the rookies, right? What do you think, Jeremy? Absolutely. Uh, I definitely learned a lot. I know I've only done a handful of deals, and uh, anyone who's doing their first or second or even third deal, I, I tend to learn a lot from them and try not to make the same mistakes they do. That's right. All right. I'm excited. Everybody grab your nachos. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Investor Shed Podcast, Tyson and Jeremy. Tyson, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you, Nick? Awesome. Thank you. Good. Jeremy, how are you doing? I'm doing so great. Tyson, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it, man. Um, so Tyson, basically, he's been um, he's been around in the area for a little bit, but we're going to have him kind of talk about himself, and uh, we'll get going into his deal after that. But go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you're about. Yeah, my name's Tyson Sidaway. Um, I'm 23 years old. I moved up here to the North Idaho area, um, October 2020, right in the middle of COVID. Um, you know, I just needed a change in my life. I love North Idaho. Um, and I just, I moved up here on a whim. I had like a thousand dollars in my bank account and here I am. Where, where'd you come from? Idaho Falls, Idaho. So I'm from Southeast Idaho originally. Um, it's about three hours from Salt Lake City, Utah. So down there. Um, but I moved up here. I had, I had just got my real estate license to be a realtor. Um, I didn't want to start down in Idaho Falls. I wanted to start up here. So I waited. I moved up here and I worked part time at Home Depot and, and sold real estate in the meantime. And February 2021, I quit. I quit the Home Depot and was all in on real estate. So a little bit about me. And then um, I was on a team to start in real estate and I left the team and you know wanted to do my own thing, spread my wings. And it's been awesome ever since. So it's the best decision I ever made. Awesome. So what, what made you think real estate to begin with and what, and what made you think you should go get your real estate license? Um, I had a friend up here, a family friend who had sold some property to my father. Um, I met him through a wedding. He was also a pastor. Um, and he just kind of told me a little bit about real estate and I had gone to college, didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I dropped out of college actually, and I had like a semester or two under my belt and just wasn't interested in it. Didn't know what I wanted to do. And I met this gentleman and um, he told me about real estate and how he wished he had gone in right after high school. And, you know, I was right out of high school. And so I was like, you know what, why not spend the money on the classes and jumped right in. So didn't know that much about it. And here I am. So awesome. That is a perfect time to, I mean, that sounds a lot like similar to my story. Like when I, I think I was 23 or so when I got my real estate license and I just moved down to Florida uh, with less than a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But inflation, I know it's been it's been a few years. I had a thousand dollars on you at the time. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, yeah, that's awesome. So tell me about uh, what was it like your first year selling real estate? Well, my first year was it was obviously crazy. COVID was happening and and a lot of people were moving. Um, out of California, Washington, all over the all over the United States. So um, it was it was a really good time to jump in. Um, a lot of people were scared. I talked to a lot of friends and family about it who were interested in real estate, but they were just scared. But um, you know, this market was was really good. Things were selling, and all it took was you know really just picking up the phone and calling people. Um, I didn't know anybody up here at the time, so I didn't really have a choice but to pick up the phone and call people. And that's what I did, and that's that's kind of what you know, made me successful is calling people and just getting out of my comfort zone. That's good stuff. Um, so Tyson, you just recently, you just recently had your first flip, right? Um, so you were an agent and now you're turning into the investor type. Can you tell us a lot about your whole deal? Like tell us everything because as a first time deal, a lot of our listeners are going to be interested in like how you did it, how you funded it. 
um, how you rehabbed it, everything. So, so lay it all out for us. Absolutely. So I, I started getting interested in, in flipping cause I kind of saw the, the writing on the wall with the market, um, this year, early 2022, you know, it, what goes up must come down. Right. And so I, I wanted to diversify a little bit and get in, into the investing game. Um, I guess you could say that's one of my end goals is to have rentals and, and so forth. But, um, I started with a flip. So I was started, I was on the hunt, um, for a flip. Oh gosh majority of this year um you know i had missed a couple opportunities but you know what they say there's always another one and so i i came across this one this one was actually on the market it was listed on the mls um at the time i thought it was a great deal but you know you don't know what you don't know until you do something right and so i made an offer on the property and we got it accepted pretty good terms or what I thought were good terms at the time. Um, 215 purchase price. The rehab we were planning was about 30,000 and our resale value was in the 320s to 350 range. And the market was okay. It was coming down, but I, I obviously wasn't expecting it to come down as much. Um, but you know, we jumped into it. We sent it anyways because there's no better teacher than just jumping right in and doing it. And so I worked on it primarily myself. I did have a contractor who I learned a lot from, um, but we did a lot of work of, of it ourselves, um, painting, everything like that. Man, I'm pretty much ready to start my own general contracting business now. But, um, you know, we jumped into it pretty quick there. We were, we were at the $30,000, you know, our budget. And we did go over our budget, I'll be honest with you guys, by about nine grand. Um, for simpler terms, we'll just put it at 40 grand. That's what our end budget was. Um, anyways, we got it all done and there were some things that I did extra on the house that I talked to some other, my friends who were, oh, you can do this, but I went ahead and did the, the landscaping. Um, so I laid new saw, things like that, that I personally think are a big deal in a flip, but maybe not to somebody else. Um, I like curb appeal. So, you know, we went over budget and again, I didn't know a whole lot and, Looking back, there's a lot, a lot of things that I would, I probably wouldn't have bought the house. Just being honest with you guys, I'd have bought a different house for sure. Um, but like I said, you know, I learned so much from this house, and moving forward, it's, it's going to help me out tenfold. So, we sold the house um, actually just about a week ago, and we sold it for three oh five. Not, not what we were hoping, but we still came out with profit on this one. We only made about ten grand. I had a I had a partner on this one. Um, and so, you know, we made it work and splits and everything like that, but going forward, it'll be a different story. Gotcha. What, what was one of the biggest things that you learned doing this flip? Um, a lot, what to look for in a house, you know, before I was just like, you need a house and it needs to be dated and ugly and you can make it better. Um, but in reality, you know, I went through there and I looked at all the electrical after we had bought it and most of the outlets were ungrounded. You know, I go back and I look and I have to rerun electrical for all that stuff because it's going to get called out a home, on a home inspection. Um, the older houses, I probably won't buy an old house again. Um, straight walls make everything a lot simpler. Um, and, you know, one bathroom houses, I won't buy one bathroom again unless I can add a bathroom in there. And so just little things like that that you don't really think about. And when you're, you know, first getting into it is how desirable something is. For Sorry to interrupt. So why do you say only one bathroom? Like, why, why, why is that a bad thing? <laughs> It's uh, so obviously you need at least one bathroom, but in, in this day and age, you know, everybody wants two bathrooms. And so I was getting, you know, lambasted, ridiculed on Facebook for, you know, the price and only having one bathroom and thinking about it hindsight, you know, I, I'm not going to buy one bathroom again, unless I can add a bathroom just because it's, it'll save me a lot of time and, and it'll make a quicker sale. Honestly, it's, if that house had a, had two bathrooms, you know, I might be looking at, the 350 range, making more money on it. So there's, there's just little things in there that I didn't think about when I was, you know, buying my first house. Okay. So, so, um, looking back, is there a way you could have added a bathroom to that house? Was it big enough? There was, there was potential. Um, I didn't do it obviously. And, you know, I, I bit the bullet on that one, but next time I will, you know, I'll, I'll work that into the budget because that's, that's something that's desirable and what people want. 
going on that just a little bit too, Tyson. Um, I know you said you got blasted on Facebook for only having one bathroom, but um, I, I got to be honest with you, like that's something you got to get used to as far as when you're putting a house on Facebook. Like, right, you're going to have your naysayers. You're going to have the people saying you can't do it. You can't sell it for this. Like, uh, but these type of people don't typically have a pulse on the market like we do. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, you put something on Facebook, you're going to get more than naysayers. You're just going to get super negative Nancys that want, are just out to cause chaos. <laughs> right. But honestly, it's a good thing. You know, it, it the more people comment on that stuff, it spreads it. You know, more people see it. And that's that's really what matters. And that's why I don't care that much. You know, I'm, I'm a realtor. I've posted a lot of things on, on Facebook this last these last two years. And everyone has some sort of hate comment on there. But at the end of the day, they're just helping get it out there to more people. So it's 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 a good thing. It's it's tough reading them sometimes. You know, you want to reply, but you know, you got to keep it professional. Let's keep in mind, everybody, this was your very first deal. And I think we kind of skipped over some of the biggest parts. If we can go back in time and get a little bit more details here. Um, a lot of people just have no idea how to get started. Can you tell us what, what was going on in your mind looking for a property? Um, how you figured out you're going to fund it? Um, what, what that process was like, like, did anyone tell you no? Um, did you just keep going that can you, can you elaborate on that story? Of course, of course. So being in the real estate industry, um, you know, you meet a lot of people like yourselves, um, you know, the REI team over there, people who are doing investing day to day. Um, so I just, I talked to a lot of these folks. Um, one of my good friends is at KW, Dennis Spencer. He was the one who actually funded this deal. And at the time I didn't know he, he actually, you know, did hard money loans or private money. And so I had talked with Jeremy um, before finding, you know, any of these flips. And I met with actually another member of your team, Josh Cote, really good friend of mine. Um, I sat down with him and talked to him a little bit about what it takes to, you know, get private money. Where can I find it? So forth. And um, he mentioned that Jeremy, you know, with, with your guys is what you guys are doing there with the, with the private money and hard money loans. Um, and so I talked to Jeremy and I believe there was somebody else who told me to talk to Dennis. And so I talked to Dennis. I talked to all these people I knew who had the best deals, right? Turns out Dennis was going to give me a deal um, with no points up front. Uh, pretty good interest rate at the time, 7% interest only. Um, Jeremy, I think you were at like 10% with one to two points up front. And, you know, that's what it is. That's pretty much an industry standard. Um, now I've learned going forward, um, I got a pretty good deal. And I think Jeremy, you even told me to jump on that. You're like, take that deal. Yeah. I remember, I, I remember talking to Dennis after the fact, um, and, and just chatting with him and I'm like, Hey, what's this? I hear that you're like giving away money, like super cheap. And, <laughs> and he just looked at me and laughed and smiled. And he's just like, he just said, you know, um, we're in a, my wife and I are in a really good position, and we've and we've chatted that, you know, we want to we want to see, we if we ever have this much money, we we want to be able to lend it out to get newer investors started. Um, and I just thought that was really cool. They just they they didn't care as much about the return. They just wanted to, um, they wanted to help jumpstart entre young entrepreneurs' careers with it, which something um it, it's just cool it's just part of networking it's just part of getting out there and talking to people so absolutely tell us what it was like making an offer on this property were you nervous at all oh yeah absolutely um i think with with any property you know when you're making an offer that's no inspection you know you're just you're just jumping right in um it, it can be nerve-wracking because again you know i didn't know what i was doing really i what if i bought the house and you know, the plumbing needed completely upgraded and I didn't have the money to do that. You know, there's, there's just so many what ifs, but you know, you just got to do it, you know, and take the risk, it'll pay off. And, you know, for your first one, so you're probably going to run into some bumps and some things you don't know, you know, what you're looking for, but that's, that's part of the process. Unfortunately, you got to, you got to grow from it. Yeah. I remember when I got my first flip, uh, um, the very first day kind of showing up to the property, um, I had no contracting experience, but I knew I had to like take this on and, uh, had no, I think I, I think I went to Harbor Freight and bought a hammer and that's all <laughs> I had. <laughs> um, can you tell us, do you remember what your first day was like when you showed up to the property to actually start working on it? Where was your mindset? Were you nervous? Were you confused? Or did you have a plan right from the start? Um, I pretty much had a plan right from the start. Um, I'm thankful my, my girlfriend Taylor joined me in on this and she kind of designed everything. I, I have not a single artistic bone in my body, so I'm, I'm thankful for her. She was able to kind of 
you know, put things together. Um, she told me something about matching the other day, but I'll save it for another time. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I got there the first day and, and just went to work, started demoing, ripping up carpets, things like that. Um, it was honestly a pretty easy demo. Um, there wasn't any like hardwood flooring or anything. It was pretty much just carpet and, and some of that, I think it was linoleum, you know, so it was pretty easy and it was fun. You know, the demo, the demo part of it is fun. Um, as you get going and things aren't getting coming together as quickly as you want, that's when it starts to get a little bit more nerve wracking, but it takes time, unfortunately. During the construction process, what was like the, the most, um, what was the biggest thing that you couldn't really anticipate you having to do repairs on or, or, uh, cause you mentioned you went a little over nine gram over and you probably went over on your time. Was there anything that you just were like, Oh shoot, I totally forgot about this. Or did something pop up that was unexpected? Painting the exterior of the house. Um, that was a big one and I knew it was going to be expensive if I hired it out. So I, I did it myself. Honestly, it was one of the last nice days of the year. Um, but I had gone throughout, you know, the flip thinking that we were going to be good on the paint, um, outside, but everybody I talked to that came by was just like, man, you need to paint this thing. You need to paint this thing. And that was just something that I knew if, if I was going to hire that out, I was definitely going over the budget. Um, but I actually ended up being able to do it myself, just rented a paint sprayer down the road and, you know, I did it for the cost of the paint and the, and the paint sprayer rental for a day. But that was a big thing. And, you know, I, there were some sleepless nights about it um, just because I didn't know how to paint a house. You know, on the outside, I could roll, but that would that would have taken me weeks. Um, another thing I'll, I'll add on that, again, was the electrical. Um, that was a big thing. Luckily, this this house had a basement, so we I didn't have to tear out any walls. I could just go right in the basement and run the lines up myself. And so I learned how to do electrical and things like that. But, you know, I bought a little outlet tester now. So when I'm going to a flip, I'm checking the outlets and making sure that they're grounded properly next time. So just, you know, little little things like that. But overall, I'd say there, there weren't any hiccups or unexpected things. Um, just those two. So... Yeah, that little ground uh, outlet testers. What is it? Two ninety nine at Harbor Freight is one of the best investments for inspections. Absolutely, absolutely. Did you ever get shocked doing your own electrical? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep, I did. I did too. Twice. Yep. <laughs> I remember when Sam did her first flip. I was sitting there watching her, and I'm like, "Don't do that. You're gonna get shocked." And then two seconds later, <laughs> well. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor was, it was one of the first days we got to the, to the house. She, she, we opened up the electrical panel and it was dusty and, you know, spider webs in there. And she was about to take a broom in there and start sweeping it out. And I was like, whoa, 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 you know, about to fry herself. And you turn that breaker off. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned you had a partner on this. Um, if you don't, if you don't want to talk about this, we can always edit it out. But, um, can you tell us what, what, what made you change your mind about it, future investments? I think you said that you probably wouldn't go that direction. It, it, I think it's deal dependent. Um, he definitely helped a lot in this scenario, especially when we went over budget. I know I didn't have a lot of money to, to cover that. You know, I only had enough to for down payment and, and a couple other things, but um, I was thankful to have him there. He, he supported me through that. Um, but going forward, you know, it's, I don't, I don't have a problem with investing with somebody else. Um, like I said, it's deal dependent, but I'd like to do some of my own stuff, make more of the money. Cause I feel like as a partner, I'm lacking in, in the financial aspect. So if I can do a couple deals on my own, build up, build up the bank account a little bit and that way I can help somebody else. And another thing he didn't really like that much was I was using, um, I found another, another person to loan some money for the rehab. So we didn't pay for the rehab on this one. Um, so we, we offered them a return on their investment. It was like a $30,000 loan they gave us and we paid them 15% on their money within three months from selling the house. And he didn't like the fact that we were going to give back five grand to them. You know, it is what it is, but, um, going forward, I definitely, I think I'm going to do some on my own, but I, I don't think that'll be the last time I use a partner. So. Gotcha. Okay. So basically it. And so just out of curiosity, why, why didn't he, um, want to go that route? Did, did he want to try to fund it himself or get it done cheaper or pretty much Okay, fund it himself? Um, and just save the money there, that extra five grand. 
Um, but I mean that, that 30,000, it's got to come from somewhere, right? So if it's not coming from somebody else, it's coming out of our pockets. So to me, I was like, you know what? I'm more than happy to pay five grand on this money because I don't have to worry about spending it myself. Now, do you live anywhere close to Kellogg? I do not. That was another thing. <laughs> 45 minute drive. And they had just started construction the day we bought the house on the on I-90 headed out there. So Yeah, something I learned because I've done a lot of flips, um, you know, more than an hour outside of Coeur d'Alene where I live from. And it's something you really just got to put into a spreadsheet as an expense because it's going to take a couple hours a day of not just your time, but everyone's time that goes out to that property. And they're going to tack it onto their bill, too. So you got to I mean, almost everything that you try to account for you got to you got to add like two hours of labor per day times 90 days um anytime is that something that you kind of already kind of knew going in or did you just kind of slowly figure that out i slowly figured that out towards the end you know i was <laughs> when gas prices were their highest and i was driving my truck out there to you know haul stuff garbage out there and that was seventy dollars every three days driving my truck out there and so it it adds up very quickly um and that was one thing you know i didn't i didn't think about jumping into it you know i just wanted a house i just wanted to flip a house i didn't care where it was i just wanted it and there were there are a lot of things and in traveling is that's something you definitely have to factor in because that was you know probably two grand in gas we spent just driving back and forth there every day, you know, 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back. And it also takes away from your labor time. So every day as you get out there and it feels like you're not doing any work because you're just driving all day. And so that's something I'll take into account next time. But I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of the Silver Valley. I'm not afraid of buying, you know, somewhere that's further. It's just, it's deal dependent. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, it's something that shouldn't deter you. It's just something you got to anticipate a little bit better. And it's something I still fail to do on every other project where I, you know, it's an hour away. I forget to actually account for all the extra money that's going to go into it just in people driving there and, and not people not putting in a full eight hours. They're putting in six, uh, and they're still charging you for eight. (laughs) Um, and there's not much you can do about it. Um, was there anything, well, I guess you got it done before the snow came. Uh, something else I would recommend if you are doing flips during the winter, you got to account for snow removal because it's, it's gonna, it's gonna cost either you time and money to do it yourself, or you're going to have to pay a snow plow guy regularly, or you're going to have to pay whoever your handyman is out there a couple hours a day just to shovel things out. Um, so at least you didn't have to go through that yet, but just make sure <laughs> if you flip a house account for snow removal as an expense, cause it is real. <laughs> <laughs> So going forward, Tyson, you obviously, you did your first flip, you made $10,000, um, you got the proof of concept, it obviously works. Uh, and you you mentioned earlier that you said if if that were to happen, that same deal were to come across your plate, you wouldn't have taken it. Uh, nowadays, knowing what you know, what would you look for going forward in a flip? Um, I'm looking for at least three bedrooms, and I'm looking for at least two bathrooms. Um, square footage doesn't matter to me a whole lot, as long as it's, you know, proportionate with the house you know you don't want a three bedroom two bathroom house that's you know less than a a thousand square foot i'd say but things can be changed depending on on how much you know you want to put into it um so going forward at least three bedrooms at least two bathrooms i'm not afraid of buying another one bathroom in fact i'm looking at one here in post falls today you know and and that that the one bathroom kind of depends where you're at where you're buying kellogg most of the houses there have one bathroom here in post falls some houses have one bathroom, but it's not as big of a deal because you're in town. So um, things like that. Um, I'm definitely checking electrical. I'm not buying an old house again or as old um, if I can help it. Sometimes those are the better deals, but you know, there's there's things that I'm going to be checking. Electrical is one. Um, I'm going to look at the plumbing. You know, there's there's some plumbing that's outdated, not good anymore. Um, luckily, this house was just fine. Um, just the little things I didn't think about. Um, Electrical is one of them. That's why I bought that little tester, you know, make things a lot easier, save a lot of time going forward. Nice. So when you finished the house, did you end up staging it? I did not. I thought about it, um, but winter was coming. And actually, I think we, there was a week there. So we had sunshine and then all of a sudden the gloomy days came. It was rainy for like that week and it just, it never went back to sunny. It was cold. 
And so I just decided not to stage it. Um, I wanted to hurry up and get the photos done before, you know, the snow came. And thankfully we did because I think two days after we got the pictures done, it, it had snowed. Um, so we didn't stage it, but it's something I thought about and probably going forward, I think, I think we will. And I think it'll help it sell a little bit quicker and maybe for more money too. And it's, and sorry, it's been a while since I've seen the photos, but it looked like you got professional photography done. Is that right? Absolutely. Yep. I don't skip on that aspect. I think, I think professional photography makes a world of difference. Um, you know, you're able to do things on there, brighten up rooms when it's, you know, a dark gloomy day. Um, just little things like that. I think, I think it makes a world of difference for sure. Don't just think about it. I mean, it, it does. There's, it, it's absolutely necessary. Like 98% of the people that are, are going to go show, like click on the showing option on your house. They've seen the photos. You want to show it in its best light. You want to gen- the photos are supposed to generate showings and, um, nobody should ever skip out on that. So. Um, tell us, uh, how long was it on the market before you got an offer? Uh, it was on the market for about two weeks, two weeks there. Um, we had a couple showings. I had priced it at a higher price point, you know, as I, as you do, just hopefully somebody's going to bite on that. Um, but I didn't waste any time, you know, doing a price adjustment. I didn't have an emotional connection to the house. You know, I was, I was stoked about it. Um, I love the house. I love the way it looked. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, the longer I hold on to it, the more it's going to cost me, you know. So the quicker I can get it sold, the better. And so we price, we did a price adjustment pretty pretty quick there. Um, and that, that generated quite a bit of interest and it actually brought in an offer over asking. So I couldn't complain. Yeah, you can never price a property too low. That's what I've learned, you know, doing real estate. You can only price it too much, and it's and you're and you're smart to actually make a price adjustment right away. And when you weren't getting the activity you needed, um, and selling a house within two weeks in this kind of market is pretty darn good. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you. There were some. Oh, another thing I didn't account for. Sorry, I'll just put this in real quick. Is since the market changed, um, can seller concessions is a big thing right now. Um, that's another thing I didn't account for, you know, that's, that was, I think we ended up with 16 grand in seller concessions, um, 10,000 buy down. And then they did a home inspection and another, they asked for another 6,700 bucks off, but you know, we, we just got to the point where we're like, okay, you know what, let's, let's get it sold and move on, you know, we'll move on to the next one. So yeah, price adjustments and, um, seller concessions. That's a big thing I didn't think about. And that definitely bit into the bit into the bottom line. So, yeah. So my if you if you go and download one of our uh, house flipping spreadsheets off our website, it's already automatically accounted for seller concessions. And for the last few years, I just I, when I go and start a new one, I just delete that, not even thinking about it. Like, but yeah, we got to go back into uh, a, a new world of where buyers ask for concessions, and it's it's so common. It should just be accounted for right from the start. It should. So um, can we go back and talk about your real estate agent career a little bit? You've been you've been in the business a couple of years, and if I if I know this, I I don't think I really stalk you too much, but I believe um, you started off at Keller Williams on a team, and then you went to another, and then I think you went to another team, and then you and then you left the brokerage. Um, so you so you bounced around maybe three times. Yeah. Tell us. Um, what that journey was like and what you learned from each thing and, and why you chose to be where you're at. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I joined the team, uh, to, to hopefully, you know, get help, um, learn how to talk to leads, how to talk to people in general. Um, you know, what did I need to be doing? Um, coaching was a big thing that they offered at the time. Um, again, you know, I jumped into this, started making the phone calls cause I didn't have another choice. And so, I eventually got to the point where I was on the team. I, I felt that things weren't weren't that fair. Um, they were taking more of of the money, and you know, at the, when I joined, I was like, you know, sure, you know, um, you guys are paying for coaching. There, there's some value here. Um, it got to the point where they weren't paying for coaching anymore, and they were kind of hand, I guess, what's cherry picking deals and giving them to other agents on the team when I was performing quite well, in my opinion. Uh, so I just got to the point where I left and, you know, I left the team respectfully and told them, you know, I just wanted to spread my wings and I ended up partnering with another gal and um, hindsight 2020, don't go into a partnership. I love, I love this person to death. I'm not going to name names, but um, it just, it just 
didn't feel like it was even. Um, I had done one month, three million in sales, and I had to share that with her. And that's that's a tough pill to swallow, you know, especially when somebody's not doing the work and you're not getting any money from them, you know, to make it even. So I left again. Um, at this time, I left the brokerage. I actually ran into some problems with the brokerage over there and, and some of the people. Um, I still have a lot of good friends over there that I appreciate and, you know, I've learned a lot from like you guys, Dennis Spencer, a lot of people like that. But um, there were some, I had some problems there. So I left and you know, I'm over at EXP now and I love it. You know, there's, there's really good incentives and, and it's been awesome. And, you know, I, I haven't done as many deals this year, but the amount in, I guess, GCI is, is exactly the same. So I've done half as many deals as I did my first year. And I made the same amount of money just being on my own. And it's been, it's been awesome to have my own free time too. So when you were on teams, did, did you get the admin support that you needed to kind of make the you know, like the way we run our team and the one, the way I believe real estate teams should be run is we try to take 80% of the workload off of our team members' plates so they can just focus on 20% of the job and get paid 50% of the commission. Um, but then again, I know not every team's created equal, but do, do you feel like you were getting proper admin support to where you you can literally do 20% of the job because like right now you're on your own with no admin right or do you have an admin I don't have an admin um I only have a, a transaction coordinator you know once that once that puppy gets into escrow then it's on her plate but I don't have an admin you know I'm doing doing all the same stuff trying to make things happen for myself um but at the time when I was on the teams they didn't they didn't have admins either it was you know us calling people us making appointments us doing all the work to, to get something into escrow. And so I've never had the the luxury of having someone, you know, there to support me like that, where I can only focus on the 20%, but in the future, it would be nice. Well, th- thanks for sharing. Um, I appreciate being so open about that. And I, I don't mean to pry, but I'm always curious why people jump around on teams. Um, <laughs> uh, just because, um, it, because I'm an owner of a team, it, it, it fascinates me. And I just want to know what um, what are people doing wrong or what are people doing right? Um, do you envision yourself ever trying to grow a real estate sales team or do you um, think that you'll stay on your own and more focus on investments? I'd like to. Um, there were a lot of people who had gotten into the business at the time and um, saw my success in it and I wanted to help those people. Um, but it got to the point where it was, you know, it's, it's tough to dedicate when I'm still trying to learn myself and grow and, you know, make money and stuff like that, it's hard to put time into somebody else to teach them how to do it. And I'll, I'll share little tidbits here and there. Um, but for right now, I don't, I don't see that in my future, but you know, who knows, maybe in 10 years. Yeah, possibly I could see it happening, but as of right now, it's not in the plans. Um, I'd like to focus on you know selling real estate and investing as well on the side. And, um, yeah, so who knows? We'll see. But, um, I have thought about it. I'll be honest. I've thought about it, but right, not right now. Okay, cool. So you completed your first flip. Congratulations. You just closed on that within the last couple of weeks, right? Yep. Last week. Awesome. So what's, what's next for you? Um, hopefully I'm going to buy another flip. Uh, as you know, I made an offer on your guys' place. Um, I'm looking for a multitude of things. Um, if I can find a duplex to buy, I'm, I'm planning to buy a duplex next year. Um, gonna be living in one side right now. It seems that this, you know, you can't, it's hard to make things cash flow with a duplex if you're not renting out both sides. Um, but I look at it as, look at it as if I can lower my, my payment, like I'm, what I'm paying in rent right now, then it's, it's worth it. Gotcha. So you're looking for something to house hack. Yes. Yes. Or a flip. If I can find a flip, you know, for a good deal, I'll, I'll jump on it. Cause I still got a year here on my lease. So, um, but if I find a, a good deal on like a house hack or a duplex situation, then I will buy out uh, my lease and I'll move in there because you know, it'll, it'll save me the money going forward. Awesome. So we actually have, um, Craig Curlop, the, um, godfather of the house hacking book, <laughs> Uh, the bigger pockets guy. He's he's going to be speaking at our live um, uh, event next month in Sandpoint. Uh, so if you're interested, come check that out. And then he'll also be speaking in March at our Coeur d'Alene event. Um, and then we'll have him on this podcast uh, in in just a couple of weeks. So um, I would, if you haven't yet, I would recommend check out that book on house hacking uh, or listen to some of his stuff. He's he's 
pretty darn good at it. It's a good book. It's a uh, it's life changing stuff for sure. So uh, we're uh, we're getting to the point where we're kind of winding down a little bit, Tyson. But um, we got a couple cu- couple final questions for you. Um, so this is what we call the thirty million dollar question. So if you had thirty million dollars in your bank account, what would be the th- first thing you spend it on? Uh, a storage unit complex. Interesting. Okay. I think that for me, it seems low maintenance. Um, I'm sure that it's probably not, but um, you know, you're dealing with people up front and at the end. And if they're not paying on their storage units, um, there's not much you need to do to a storage unit. You know, just throw a lock on there. You got a box, and and you're good. You know, um, it seems pretty pretty low maintenance from that aspect, and you know, pretty easy to collect money on that. It's not as much as you know renting out a house, but you have 40 plus storage units, you know, you're, you're going to be making pretty good money monthly. Um, the next thing I'd probably buy is, is an apartment complex. Um, just rentals, you know, things that positive, um, assets where you're making money on, I'm not going to be buying any more liabilities or anything like that. I wouldn't buy a brand new car. Um, I'd buy a house for myself and then a couple investments and, and, live off of those. And hopefully I'd like to start, you know, loaning out money to other people so they can make their dreams happen. Um, I'd love to be that guy like Dennis is and hand out money to people and with a low interest rate, just so they can get their feet wet and, you know, get more people interested in, in doing investing. So paying it forward, super great. Um, there's a lot of great resources out there for self storage too. I don't know if you've heard of AJ Osborne. I have not. AJ Osborne's great. I'll send you some of his info after he's uh, he does a lot in self storage. Um, really cool stuff. Really cool dude too. He's got a he's a fascinating story actually. Um, what advice would you be giving to new investors looking to get into their first or second deal? Um, you know, don't, don't jump into something so quick. You know, if you want a house, take the time, you know, have somebody come look at it with you, have a general contract to come with you. Um, because they're going to be looking for, for the little things like electrical, things like that, that you, that you're not going to know about. Um, and another thing I would say is be there your first flip, your second flip, be there and be part of the process of, of flipping house. So you actually know what it, what it takes. You know, some things take a lot of time ordering windows, you know, six to eight weeks out. Oh yeah. If you're not there, you're not going to know that. Um, so I think just being there for your first or second flip and being part of the process from demo to building it out and, you know, doing tile work, things like that. I think you're, it's going to benefit you a lot in the future. And if you ever find a woman, she, she values those aspects of a handyman. (laughs) That's what my mom always said, at least. I love it. Um, and then another question for you, if you had one business or investing book that you'd recommend every single person read, what would that be? This is going to sound cliche, um, but rich dad, poor dad, of course, you know, that's, that's one of the best. That's what got me, you know, my, my first little, little taste of, of investing and what it, what it can lead to. And, um, just going from there, but I would like to read um, How to Make Friends and Influence People. That's a good one. I've heard a lot about. I've read Atomic Habits. That's another one I'd recommend, but definitely Rich Dad, Poor Dad for just starting. That one I'm reading right now. <laughs> there you go. All right. Nick, anything you want to add to the conclusion of this? Uh, I agree with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I agree with How to Win Friends and Influence People. That was actually one of the best... I- books I ever read as far as when it comes to developing like social skills, how to win friends and influence people. So, um, uh, Jeremy, have you read that one? I have not. It's probably why I don't have friends and I can't influence anybody. <laughs> yeah. Brush up on that one. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, no, uh, all good stuff. Thank you so much for being here, Tyson. Um, I I'm really excited to see what you do next and, um, and, uh, feel free to get in touch with us if you need anything uh resource wise we're we're all in the same business even though we're in the, at, at another brokerage it's no big deal we're all friends we can all play uh in in whatever sandbox we want so well thanks again for having me guys it was it's good oh um if the if people want to get in touch with you how how should they do that um you guys can email me at north idaho tyson t-y-s-o-n at gmail.com um look me up on facebook uh, my real estate company is called dre realty group dre d-r-a-e my middle name so i'm yeah just go on there i'm sure you'll find me somewhere cool we'll put it all in the show notes and everything for you too so thanks again
All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Investor Shed. Please like and subscribe, motherfuckers. See ya. Thank you so much for checking out the Investor Shed podcast. If you enjoyed your time, make sure to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Follow along on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at The Investor Shed for shorts and promos about each episode. Do you want to be a guest or know someone who has great real estate investing advice and stories? Reach out to us at theinvestorshed at gmail.com.